guys. Happy Monday. Supposed to be with y'all yesterday on Sunday, but <laughs> I took the day off. So you saw the picture at the intro. It says Monday in the studio with Sandy instead of Sunday in the studio with Sandy. Um, I needed a day just to kind of, you know, <laughs> catch my breath after a weekend of teaching. So hi, you're in Linda. You're on. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Helen. Hi, Deb. Hi, Stephanie. Let's see. Let's go up and see who do we have. Anita and Helen and Carol and Laura and Kitty. So glad you guys are here. All right. Well, it's 7.06. You guys ready to get started? I know I am. Yes. Um, okay. So a couple things before I turn the camera. I um, wanted to remind you, you probably saw it in the intro, that my membership group closes tonight. So if you are interested in joining, you have until midnight tonight to join. If you want more information about it, you can go to my website, which right there is my link. Same name as my page, just a .com. And then once you're there, at the very top, you're going to see this banner. And if you click on that banner, it will take you to the page that gives you um, information about the membership group, basically what we or what you can expect in a month. Um, you can sign up monthly. You can sign up yearly. Of course, it's cheaper if you sign up yearly. Um, I am with my group three to four times a month, um, creating and sharing tips and tricks and pages and techniques and designs and um, you name it, I tend to share it, all of it, <laughs> um, but in a way that hopefully my members that are on will say, hopefully in a way that it doesn't overwhelm you. Um, it is three to four times a month. Everything is recorded. It's all there on the group. So when you feel like creating, um, you can go there and watch the video and create. But um, I have guest artists on. Often, um, every quarter, we have a Zoom class so that we can actually see each other, and um, we've already had two, so we had one in January, and we just had one the end of April. I'm not looking at the comments because I'm going to get distracted, <laughs> but I promise to go back and look at them and answer any questions later, all right? Um, so I have a fantastic group of ladies that, um, that are in this group when I started it in October, um, and then, yeah, it's just, it, it's such a blessing to me. I'm not going to talk about it because I'll probably start crying. Um, but it's been such a blessing. And I opened the doors on April 30th and have had um, memberships flowing in and they've already joined the group. We have our first live tomorrow in the group together with all the new members. Um, and it's a way for me to intentionally create um, with a group of people that want to create intentionally with me. Um, and I love the intimate group part that we can share and share our pages and our inspiration. And I know I got on there last year and said, you know, I'm kind of struggling, are y'all? <laughs> um, because it was 2020, remember? So, so I've had people in the membership join from Australia, India, Canada, all over the U.S., um, so again, it's going to be nice to start tomorrow, um, with that group. Again, you can find out the information on my website, midnight tonight, doors close. Let's move on so we can get busy. I want to show you a couple of things that we've done this week. I've been on more, I think Facebook live this week than I have, I don't know, all of the last three months. <laughs> so I'm going to switch my camera down. Hopefully you guys aren't tired of me. <laughs> So this is the piece we're doing tonight. I love, love, love this surface. Thank you, Deb. Hi, Linda. Hi, Leticia. Okay, so this is a surface from a Sheila Landry. And um, just amazing. She's so talented and has the coolest surfaces. So it is an insert. And it goes down. And I'll show you more about that in a minute. Hi, Kathy. I'm back again. I'm so glad you are, Leticia. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Hi. So I just wanted to, again, do a little flip through. 
um, for those maybe that are new here on my page. And if you are new, let me know that you're new and where you're watching from. So um, last week we did some tags on the Facebook Live. And I don't think I have all of them, but this was um, a page that I created. My Zoom class I did with my students. Thank you so much, Deb. Um, I put that link, I hope, up in the top, too. So, in my group, we create just about everything. Pages. You can take this right outside your journal, put it on a memory box, put it on a piece of wood. So many different surfaces that you can put things on. But these are pages that we created in my membership group. That was uh, Summerfest last year. And we did that, um, what, the, when was that? Was that the 30th of April? No. Yes, it was, because I came to you guys at like 9.30 at night or something, jumped on. So, and then last week we did that one as well. And then I just taught this one this weekend um, and have a little something planned for my group um, with that page. So, Lots of creating fun, lots of different ways to do things. Lemons, the lemons, the lemons. So last, mine is almost full. I love hearing that, Maddie. Yes, thank you so much, Linda. Okay, so the, um, the lemon kit kind of came, I love everything lemon and lime. It's like my two favorite flavors in the whole world. Um, but I painted this on DecoArt's Facebook group a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks ago, I think, um, and it's with fabric paint. And I knew after I painted it, I wanted to paint it on something else. So I painted it on this surface, and I just love, love, love Sheila Landry's surfaces. They're so well made. Like I said, this one pops out. And then it insets. Now, I'll tell you what I did that you shouldn't do. <laughs> I'm going to move that one to the side. Um, and this is the number for it. This is the um, SLD PK 757 Elegant Circle Plaque. Um, and her packaging is just amazing. And I know that Deb Antonick put her link in the comments. So um, you can go there. But I also have it right, is that coming up? I don't think that's coming up. Um, I have Sheila's link there for you to um, write it down. This is how the surface comes. And Sheila does, like I said, such an amazing job of um, lining it up so you know exactly where to line it up. And let's get rid of that. Um, because when you when it comes like this, you can take it out and paint it. And then when you push it in, it's kind of an inset frame. So you push. And look how cool that is. So it sits in in the back. It's raised just a little bit. Um, but again, just impeccable quality. She does such a fantastic job. I know she... Um, sands and sands and sands. So, um, anyway, I just can't say enough great things about her. She's just the sweetest, most talented, um, very generous, um, friend. She just, she's amazing. So again, Sheila Landry, I put that link up. Deb put it in the comments. Let me tell you what I did. <laughs> so you don't do it. So let me zoom in just a little. Okay. So I painted my pieces separately. And then when I was done, I went to put them back in. Well, Sheila has this really nice um, little mark for where you're going to line it up. Well, I painted over it. <laughs> it's on the back. It was. So I painted over it. So now I have to kind of play around with this to try and get it in set to push it, all right? But I thought about painting. Sheila also ships quick. Yes, she does, Paula. 
Um, and again, her packaging and everything is just adorable. So I thought about painting on a square and just doing like putting a circle in the center of it and painting. But I love this surface so much that I actually just painted the other side. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you how I stenciled this. Let me zoom out just a little. And I, I sanded mine down just to get that um, imperfect kind of sketchy look. I didn't want it too perfect. So um, I'm going to show you with my stencil. Well, this is a M23. Um, it's an M square stencil. It's a line I have with Tracy Moreau. It's on my website. One of my favorite ones. It's my scroll work Tracy manipulated and had made into a, a stencil. I almost said a stamp, <laughs> um, but it's a stencil. Okay. Yes, and she always includes little extras, doesn't she? I okay, let's get some white paint. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I am going to show you a couple of important things. Okay, now, Tracy gave me a really good tip on these as well, so that you don't lose the mark. You can inset it, push it down, base coat your whole thing. Because I base coated this whole thing with black. That's what I should have done. Then I would have known that it was lined up and inset and it's not gonna be a problem. <laughs> but I did not do that. So, with our stencil, I wanna get, get some tape and a stencil brush and some white paint and a dry paper towel. Okay. Hi, Mary. Okay, so. Oh, you're so welcome, Linda. I'm excited that you won. Okay, so stencil brush is Stencil Pro, three quarter, five eighths, nothing too big, nothing too small. And you're gonna swirl your paint around on your brush. You're gonna wipe almost all of it off. Okay. Now, I should have tape. My tape is not here. I'm just gonna use some Scotch tape. I use I, blue painter's tape so it doesn't move around. Okay, so I just kind of lined this up so that I can get, um, you know, like maybe not a flat edge. So, line it up there. Again, wipe most of that paint off. Soft circular motion, counterclockwise, clockwise. This is pretty intricate, so you can hold it. So it doesn't move around on you. Okay. Oh, I just love that. Okay. So little parts like this, I wasn't too fussed about because remember, I'm going to sand it. But you want to manipulate and move this so that you can try and avoid the uh, straight edges. So let's move that up. I'm just gonna do this one more go around. If you wanna make your design brighter, go around the whole thing, let it dry, line your stencil back up, and you can go a second time. It's easier to build layers when you stencil than it is to take a whole bunch of wet paint and try and get that from underneath your stencil. That's a mess. So next to the Tim Holtz Flourish stencil, this is my next favorite. I just think it goes with so many different things. Okay, again, kind of overlap there. Don't care. Okay, so you can leave it like this. You don't have to sand it, right? So, but I did. Once it was completely dry, I sanded it. And then I came back with my um, half inch angle and a little bit of black. And on my angle brush, and I'll hold this up for y'all that aren't familiar with an angle brush. So an angle brush has a toe and a heel. And I'm using this as a half inch black gold by Dynasty. Um, I love angle brushes. It just helps you float that color on and keeps that other end of the brush out of the way. So I only have paint on that one corner, which is the toe. And you wanna blend it and you have a little moisture in your um, brush so that it kind of bleeds and 
um, gives you that nice little, uh, what's the word? It gradates over to the other side. Thank you, Cheryl, and welcome, welcome to my membership group. Okay, so again, I just took that and floated it right around the inside edge of this surface. The toe is in because that has the paint. All right, so stence painted it black, stenciled it with white, let it completely dry, I sanded it, then I wiped all the dust off and floated that color right along that inside rim of that circle. Easy peasy. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Okay, and again, I wanted to use <laughs> I wanted to use this surface, so I won't have my original to look at, which might be a little tricky. Um, I did print a picture off so I could at least see what, and, um, but I went ahead and transferred my pattern on. Again, my pattern packet will be up on my website this week. Just did not get to it yesterday when I took the day off. So transferred the pattern on, and then I base coated everything with gesso. So you can either use the media gesso, traditions gesso, whatever gesso you have. I like these, they're not gritty or grainy. Um, but again, that'll give you and show some of that texture coming through. Let that completely dry. And then I base coated it with white, okay, for my design. So I'm gonna set this down. Hi, Judy. Let's zoom in just a little. Okay, so it actually sets in so that this is kind of at an angle. And we'll go ahead and get our paint out. And of course, I have to stand because I can't sit when I paint. So I'm going to get out some plantation pine. Any dark green will work. I moved the black, but I want to get a little black out. I'm using bright yellow. And we'll get some saffron yellow. <laughs> You're very welcome, Anita. I laughed <laughs> when I saw it. Was I expected it though. And we'll get some margarita. Love this color. Hi, Judy. Okay. I probably should have put that on my um, my palette paper. Let's, there we go. Um, because you can't see my palette now. It's on my silicone mat. So, and a little asphaltum. And we'll stop there. Okay, I'm gonna get a flat brush. So I'm gonna use a number 10 um, black gold shader, just same as a, like a number 10 flat. Hi, Donna. So good to see you on. All right, so I'm gonna pick up a little plantation pine, a little touch of black, make a nice green mixture. And I just brushed it, brushed it, brushed it, brushed it. I didn't mix it down to one color. So it's a dark green with a couple of swipes of green, couple swipes of black, and I'm gonna base coat in my leaves. And try and go all the way, not on my flower. On my leaves. So if the 10's too big, you can always switch, go down a size to like an eight. See there, I have a little bit more black in it, but I want these to be nice and dark. Okay. So many ways to kind of take some of that background back when I base coat in, sometimes I get a little heavy handed. Um, and since our background is black, it's very easy to take some of that black paint, come back in and shape some things up. Mm 
Okay, so a little green, little black. Now I'm gonna slide on the chisel edge, which is the tippy tips of those bristles. And think of it like you're ice skating, okay? So you're not gonna lean back and you're not gonna lean forward. You're just gonna slide on that brush with a little bit of pressure. I think I will just zoom in instead of holding it. Okay, so handle the brush straight into the sky. And you're gonna pull that brush just like that, okay? Thank you, Debbie. Thank you so much. Okay, so, you know, like here, if I don't wanna fill in that little white area, I don't have to. I can always come back with my black at the very end, which I'll do, and clean anything up. So, I'm just gonna get that one right inside that flower there. Went over the petal just a little, okay. So let's turn that back around and let's get that lemon base coated in. So I'm gonna rinse this out. And if I have a little green in it, it's okay. I mean, you see green on lemons, right? So I'm gonna take some white and some bright yellow because yellow is transparent. We've already base coated this with gesso and white paint and I'm just gonna start filling it in. And just go all the way around. Again, turn it if you need to. All right, so I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave my flower. I know it has green on it, but I don't care. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. Here's my blue painter's tape. <laughs> It's in a different spot. And when you use a heat tool, you wanna to make sure that you move it around. It will make your paint bubble if you stay in one place and you don't wanna to get too close to it, okay? The other thing is it's got a vent on it for a reason. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it off and so I, don't hold your hand over that. It won't be a good idea when it overheats. Thank you, Deb, for putting that in. Uh, yeah, the link for Sheila Landry. She has the most amazing um, surfaces and packets that go along with it. This was a, a piece that was created um, for a Peggy Harris design, actually. Okay, so my my um, piece is quite hot. So, but look at all the different layers. And let me tell you, I varnished this side so that if I get anything on it, I can come back with a baby wipe and wipe it off. Um, and this is my go-to varnish, which I always neglect to share and show you guys. It's my favorite varnish. So I varnished the whole piece after it was completely dry. And this piece will just be on the back, but I can't wait to hang this up. I love this. I love the surface and I love this piece. All right, so I'm gonna rinse out my brush and get, um, let's get a number 12. <clears throat> no, I think I'm gonna stick with the 10. I'm gonna stick with the 10 flat. I'm gonna get a little bit more of the bright yellow. Less white. And I'm just gonna give this another little coat of paint. Again, because it's transparent, I want to start building these layers. And I'll start building some of them now while the paint's still wet. The preferred way I like to paint. So on the corner of that brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of saffron yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it around and just kind of float some of that color on. And again, if I go outside the line, easy fix. I'll come back with black paint, shape it up. And I'm just gonna kind of walk that color right over. So this is gonna start giving our lemon some shape. So a little bit more of that color. Again, saffron yellow. 
I missed the name of this pattern. Um, it's in the link, Linda, but I'm going to hold it up for you right here. Um, this is the surface right here. The e-packet for this design <laughs> has not been written yet. It'll be up on my website this week. So now I'll put that saffron yellow and float that on this side. And when I float, it's not, see how it's on the corner? But it's only on that corner. And again, I'll just kind of walk that toward the center. Same brush. I'm going to pick up some asphaltum. Did I show you guys that one? Asphaltum. So I have it just on that corner. I'm going to work it in. See that yellow on the other side? That's what we want. I'm not washing my brush. I just wipe it out, get the next color. So a little asphaltum. I'm going to work that in on my brush. Turn that, and I'm just going to kind of tap that in under the leaf because I know I'm going to have a shadow there. It starts to stutter like that for you, like mine is because it's very hot in my studio um, with these studio lights. So I'm just going to, I picked up a little bit more of the saffron yellow just to kind of help it move. You could also use a little bit of glazing medium if you want to, but I just, I'll just go back and get it wet. Okay, and again, I'm loving that texture that the gesso's giving it. And then I want my little, my kind of little divot that I have right there. Okay, so now see we're starting to get some shape. Thank you so much, Linda, I appreciate that. Come over here and just transition. It just kind of stops, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that saffron on one corner, a little bit of that yellow on the other, just to get that to transition a little bit better. Wipe off my brush. I'm going to pick up a little touch of the asphaltum. Bring some of that asphaltum right over here on this side of the lemon. Again, to take it from being flat on our surface to being dimensional. It's nice that you don't have to worry about the edge because, of course, you can take the background color and clean it up. All right, a little bit more asphaltum. I'm going to take some right up underneath that leaf. See, go right on top of that leaf if you need to. All right, I do want to take care of that edge right there um, because it is too light. So I am going to go to my angle brush because I can get in a little bit closer with that toe. So I'm going to get in right in here. It's kind of a loose little float of color. right there. Okay. Now, thank you so much, Beth. So you see right in here where my finger smudged and I got yellow again, black will clean it up. Let me, um, let me dry this with the heat tool. Let me get a little bit yellow down here. Okay. So I'm going to hit that with my heat tool. Okay, and sometimes when I'm painting, I have to go ahead and take care of something um, because that's all I <laughs> that's all I can think about. Um, and it'll, I, maybe it's my OCD, it'll kind of pester me. So I want to come in and clean up this just a little bit. And this edge. Does that happen to you guys at all? <laughs> You do something and then you can't forget about it. You keep going right back to it. Okay. 
Okay, now what I wanna do then is I wanna take that paint, bring it away, and then I'll take my bigger brush, just so that you don't end up with a line. You don't want it to look outlined. So I'll take my bigger brush. And just kind of soften that into the background. Okay, so clean that up. <laughs> oh, Deb, yes, when you start to twitch and sweat. And let me tell you, my hair is already a big frizz ball because I don't know why I never realized how um, hot these studio lights get. And it's going to be really fun in the middle of summer here in Georgia. Um, I have to get me a silent fan. Okay, so I'm going to rinse out my brush. Now I'm going to come with just a touch. Like, just dress your brush. Let me come over here. So I just dressed it, meaning there's very little paint on both sides and more white. And this time, I'm going to kind of start putzing this brush around. Have a little bit of water in my brush. See how I'm just kind of putzing that around? I'll pick up a little more yellow. We're just going to start building that layer, make it a little bit brighter on this side. Don't be afraid to use your fingers. They're the best blenders. Okay. Loving how that's coming together. So I'm going to take a little bit of margarita. Remember that light green color we had? A little bit of white. You know that I have like a little green spot up here. And a little bit of green. Oops, that's all white. Let's get more green. Thank you so much, Norma. I try really hard. I'm... I'm a visual learner. If somebody shows me, I'm pretty good um, and explains it. <laughs> but to have to read directions, not my strong suit. All right. I want that to be brighter. We're going to build layers. So, so now what I want to do is I'm going to come in and get a mezzaluna brush. So if you're not familiar with a mezzaluna brush, um, they come in four different sizes. It's by Dynasty, of course, my go-to brush company. Um, it's got a nice stiff bristle to it. So there's some softer bristles in there, but then the stiffer bristles, it's just perfect for dry brushing, okay? So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white, work that into my brush, and use it very similar to how I use a stencil brush. I'm gonna wipe almost all of it off. And I'm just gonna tap it in place. And I'm giving it a slight little scrub. Very uneven. See, I'm not doing this. I'm just kind of mushing it in, trying to keep those edges soft. Okay. I thought you were visual learner great. So am I. I am. I, I mean, if my husband shows me one thing on the computer, I'm pretty good. I can get it. But for me to have to sit, it takes forever. Um, Okay, I do want to come back with a little bit of saffron. Tone down that brown just a little bit. And again, this is what always amazes me, is just how you can transform something with paint. You know, to, to put that dark on the side and the side to make it look dimensional, to add that roundness and have the front of that lemon just now look like it's popping out. Um, it's just about building those layers, knowing where to place the color, Okay, I love it, silicone matte, it's so easy to clean, almost looks new when you look at it, absolutely. I love, 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 Linda, and how easy it is to clean. So um, I have three different ones. This is my, my favorite, it's a little bit bigger. Silicone baking mat on Amazon, best thing I bought last year. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit more of that margarita in white. 
a little margarita in white right up here get that green little spot okay. come rinse that out just love watching you paint you make it look so easy that lemon just pops thank you Sandra thank you thank you that means a lot I love to paint love to teach Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of that asphaltum on the, I don't have hardly anything on my brush, that's why it's all splitting, um, but a little bit of asphaltum on that corner. And I just wanna lightly walk some of that color right down at the top of that lemon. Just to kind of, I want it to look green at the top, but then have a little bit of a shadow underneath it. Okay, so a little bit of that asphaltum. All right, let's move on to our stems. So I'm gonna to move to a 3 8 angle. And don't know why, oh, hello. That just went in fast motion. Um, 3 8 angle, again, has a toe and a heel. And I'm going to load my brush with plantation pine <laughs> and craving lemonade. I'm cra craving uh, lemon meringue pie. That was my... Um, that was my birthday cake when I was a kid because I didn't like frosting. So my mom always made me a lemon meringue pie, homemade. Okay, so I have plantation pine and asphaltum on my brush. Just pick it up, pick it up. Both colors, not mixed down to one color. All right, and hopefully I'm not getting this all messed up. I should put it on a paper towel. But I'm gonna slide along that chisel edge of the brush. The toe is following, the heel's leading. And I'm gonna pull that to paint in these branches, get a little bit of texture in them. All right, then we'll pick up a little bit of white on that brush that has green and brown. And if you watched my uh, Bless Our Nest video, um, it's here on the page. It's also on my YouTube channel and um, has the bird nest on it. Was it that one? No, it wasn't. It was the dogwood. The dogwood where we had the branches and I showed how I did the branches. Same technique. Not sure if it's the same colors, but I'm just kind of sliding. They're going to look a little strange right now until we get a little bit of darkness on them, but um, they're greenish brown, leaning more towards the green. Okay, then I'm going to pick up a little bit of green. Just kind of uneven tap. So not a lot to these. If you take out, like I just took out my highlight right there, that's okay, I can come back and put it in. Just like that. Okay. So let's tackle these leaves after I take care of this other thing that's bothering me. I'm gonna pick up on my angle brush, a little bit of asphaltum, a little bit of saffron. So on the toe, I have a little bit of saffron yellow, a little bit of asphaltum. I just have a line right there and it's bugging me. Okay, eh, better, but just want to soften it. Okay, so that softened it out. There was such a hard edge right there. It's all my eye could go to. Okay, so I'm going to take my number 10 flat. We're going to set out high. Betty, 
I love frosting now, Linda, but I did not as a kid. Um, just, ugh. So lemon meringue pie it was. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up plantation pine and a, just a tiny touch of black. And I'm gonna do one leaf at a time. So if you've watched my other lives, do have a different little way I like to do my leaves. Base coat it in, wipe off my brush. Plantation pine, bright yellow, a little bit of white, mix that together. Swipe it across a paper towel. And I swipe it across a paper towel because I don't want too much color. I can always come back and add more. So you can slide on the chisel edge to put in your center vein. Chisel edge of the brush on, well, I took all the paint off. <laughs> chisel edge of the brush on the edge of the leaf. And I'm gonna swipe, swipe, swipe. Okay, let me see if I can do it with my hand out of the way. Probably not. <laughs> Let me hold it up. So I'm gonna chisel edge of the brush right on the edge of the leaf, and I'm going towards an at an angle towards the base of that leaf. Okay, now, if you come too far in, the fix is a little bit of your dark green base color, which is green, plantation pine and a little black, and you can come out, okay? So if you go too far in, because you wanna have the lighter on that outside edge, and some of the dark coming in. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off my brush. I'm gonna pick up plantation pine, a little bit of margarita, and a touch of white. Bump that color up. So see the difference with the margarita? The first one, if I said margarita, it was wrong. It's plantation pine, citron green and white. This is plantation pine, margarita and white. Um, and it just bumps that color up a notch to have a little bit more of a yellow um, tone to it. All right, and I'll do a couple on that, slide my, my um, vein down the center. And then my favorite part, tropical blue. You can use desert turquoise, peacock teal. Um, oh gosh, whatever your favorite little uh, turquoise or aqua color is. This, I didn't even rinse my brush out or wipe it off. I just picked it up and I'm just wanna, I wanna put it in a couple of places. Okay, so just here and there, but not everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe off my brush. Let's get some more plantation pine, touch of black. Wipe off the brush, um, plantation pine. I need a little clean white there. Uh, citron green, little white, mix that together. Again, if it helps you, put a vein down the center so you know the direction your leaf is going. Chisel edge of the brush on the edge of the leaf and pull back. Chisel edge and pull back. I'm gonna wipe off the brush, plantation pine, a little bit of margarita and white. Mix that together. Swipe it across the paper towel. You just get that fresh green color. Love that pop. Okay, wipe off the brush, a little bit of tropical blue. And again, just in a couple places. Now, this does not bother me. See how it stutters? I personally like that. I like that texture. Um, if that bothers you, you can always take a mop brush and soften it out or use a little more paint. I have very little paint on my brush because I love that effect. Okay, so wiped off my brush, plantation pine, little bit of black. Let's take care of this big leaf here. Wipe off the brush, 
plantation pine, little citron green, little bit of white, mix it together, swipe it across a paper towel, slide on your chisel edge to get that middle vein, chisel edge of the brush on the edge of the leaf, pull, swipe. And I'm not getting any color except black right there. I think I had a heavy-handed black um, swipe of color. So I'm gonna bump up my color just a bit, meaning a little more citron green, a little bit more white. There we go. Yep, see that's where that black is. And you go over it a couple times, you're just gonna keep picking it up. So best thing to do is just leave it. And then re-slide that stem, wipe off the brush, a little bit of Plantation pine, margarita, and white. Mix that together. Add a little bit of tropical, oops, a little bit of tropical blue. Okay, so let's set that down. And my next live where I will draw the names for those winners is on May 16th, okay? Not next Sunday because Friday I get my second COVID shot and I'm not planning anything for the weekend. All right, let's go to these two leaves. We're almost done with this. Okay, so Plantation Pine, a little bit of black. Let's get some more plantation pine. Oh, you're so welcome, Kathy. All right. Um, so sap, sap green, plantation pine, a little bit of black. Base in that leaf. Wipe off the brush, plantation pine, citron green, a little bit of white. Okay, it's a little on the white side. If that happens and it's a little too bright, I just pick up more of the plantation pine. Okay, step I missed, you can pull your vein in if it helps you. So again, if you're new to my page here and you've not seen a live before, I'd love for you to follow the page. Let me know where you're watching from. And if you're on YouTube, I'd love for you to subscribe to my Sandy McTeer Designs YouTube channel. And for those on here that joined my membership group, can't wait to create with you guys tomorrow night for our first little gathering. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you can go to my website, check out my membership group. It closes at midnight tonight. So I just picked up a little bit of that light green. Now I'm gonna pick up a little brown, just to add it on those stems, make them look a little more natural. Okay, so see on, on that leaf where I have very little in the center. So I am gonna take my plantation pine, a little bit of black, and flick that out the other direction. So from the center at an angle, out. Kind of get that color back in. Plantation pine, a little bit of margarita, and some white. Mix that together. Swipe it off on my paper towel. Chisel edge of the brush on the edge of the leaf. Ooh, let's get a little more margarita and bump that yellow up just a bit. Okay, we're getting there. Oh, I think so too, Norma. That would be wonderful to make cards with that, right? 
Vanessa, hi from the UK. So glad you're on. Loved painting with you this weekend. Okay, a little bit of tropical blue. And again, just in a couple of places. I'm going to add a tiny, tiny touch of white. Just to soften that. Sorry, all the turning. Hopefully that's not giving you a headache. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my hand out of it as best I can. All right, last leaf. A little plantation pine, a little bit of lamp black. Let's turn it slowly. And we'll base cut our leaf in again. Oops, had a little bit of light in there. Wipe that off, plantation pine, a little bit of citron, a little bit of white. Swipe it across the paper towel. Slide down your center vein. Oops, dried by the time I got there. So some plantation pine, citron, a little bit of white. And just swipe it. Swipe. Everything's angled towards the base of that leaf. Some sap green, margarita, and white. And this is going to give it that yellow tone. And you would think that the citron green would give it a little bit, because it's a bright color. I mean, it. It's, look how bright that is, but I don't find it to be a bright co uh, color. I find it to be actually kind of dull. Um, that margarita, I love that yellow in it. Okay, wipe off the brush, a little bit of tropical blue. A little bit of that tropical blue here and there, but not everywhere. Okay, so there are our leaves. I'm gonna let them, I'll do some decorative little touches to them, but let's go ahead and tackle this uh, flower because it is quite easy. I got knocked out. I made it back. So glad, Linda. Again, Facebook's been acting funny for weeks. Okay, so I have... Um, this is just a zero rigger, like a liner brush, but it has a flat end. Um, you can use a liner brush if you want to. You can even use um, a small flat brush. In fact, let's, let's use this one first. This is a number five shader, okay? So similar to a flat. Um, need more white. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Peg. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and I'm just gonna rebase this flower in. So I'm just gonna start at the top, slide and push. So start at the top, slide on the chisel edge and push. Okay, slide and push. Slide and push. Slide on that chisel edge and push. And let's get that right back to there. Push. Okay. So, thank you so much, Betty. All right, so I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool after I, I wanna enlarge that one just a little. Dry that with the heat tool. <clears throat> okay, it's pretty dry. All right, so I'm gonna take a quarter inch angle. 
So I've used a half, a three eighths, right, and a quarter. So quarter inch angle, again, black gold by Dynasty, toe, heel. I'm gonna take the tiniest touch. It has a little bit of water in it, just a little. So the tiniest touch of asphaltum, and I wanna work that into the toe of the brush. So see how it's just on that one corner, not all the way over. And all I'm gonna do is at the base of the petals, I'm gonna float in very loosely, float in around what looks like it might be the center, okay? So I'm gonna leave a circle in the center of white. Easy, easy, right? Just right on that corner and I'm not pulling the brush, I'm doing a little bit of a shimmy so I don't get a straight line. I went in too far right there. So we'll just get some of that space back. Thank you, Mom. My mom's on, you guys. <laughs> okay, so I, I have that asphaltum on my brush. Float that around there. Then I'm gonna come right back down here. I have very little paint on my brush. And if you want some lines, you can slide up on the chisel edge just a little. Okay, if it's too much, just touch it with your finger. Okay. So a little asphaltum. Let me look on my other one. Yep, that's asphaltum. See those tiny little lines that go up? They're very faint. But if you want those, again, it'll just give, um, it kind of goes into the grooves that you have from the gesso, because that's what I base coated in with first, and just pull up a few little lines, sliding on that chisel edge of the brush. Okay. So, whoops, let's go around here. So you can see a little bit of that brown in here underneath that shading and pulling those lines is much easier to do, let's get on camera there, um, before you start putting in all the other little bits. So, now I'm going to load, since I have this brush, I'm just gonna use this brush. I'm gonna load some saffron yellow. Touch that right in the center. Kinda get that little circle. Rinse out my brush. I'm gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm gonna use that um, Zero Rigger, get it a little wet, come over and pick up some asphaltum, that brown. And we wanna make a little bit of an inky puddle. So, a little bit of water. Let me come down here so you can see. It's kinda inky. See there in the upper right-hand corner? Okay, so little inky paint. And I just wanna do random little dots. So dot, 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 dot. And I'm moving my hand kinda of to the left, to the right, back and forth so that you don't have a dot and a dot and a dot. That looks too um, staged. So just kind of dot, 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 dot. When you say it, they look better. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry. and then come back, I'm gonna hit it with my heat tool. That center's a little thick. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let that um, dry real quick, or cool off, it's a little hot. Um, I'm gonna come in with some black and just take away some of these pattern lines that I didn't quite get Came in here a little too far. You can separate that. Just a little bit of black. It's awesome too for um, if you want to reshape. So let's say, let's say this leaf right here. It's very, very uniformed, right? 
I can come in with some black. Give it a little bit of an in movement with that color right onto that leaf. And then when I go to put my little swirl on, it'll take care of that and give it a little bit of movement instead of it just being straight. Same with this one. It has a little bit of it, but I can even accentuate that more. Go up into that leaf. And see how that just lifted? Now that leaf looks like it's got a little bit of a wave to it. Okay, it's just a great way to give something shape. Okay, so back to our center, a little bit of bright yellow, a little bit of white. I'm just gonna tap that in the center. Leaving that texture. And then I am gonna come back with some saffron and a little bit of white. And hit these. Dot, 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 dot. See how I'm random? I'm not trying to hit every brown dot. I just wanna hit some of them. Leave some showing, so when you do it random and fast, you'll get a much better look. Okay, same brush, zero rigor. And I'm gonna start at the tip and outline one side of the petal. Oops, too much paint. Now, that looks very outlined. What I wanna do is take my brush and go right on that side and kind of pull that so that it doesn't look like it's outlined. Okay, same thing with there. Got a little bit heavy handed with that paint. We don't want it to look like it's heavily outlined. But I like that little Kind of that little flip you can put on the end. A little curl. Okay. So there is our flower. I'm gonna let it dry and come back in and shade in between some of these petals underneath um, where it meets the uh, leaf right there. But let's take a little bit of margarita and a little bit of white because I kind of lost my green. Hello, let's get right up here. So there and a little bit of green up here. Okay. Thank you so much, Marie. I'll have the line drawing and um, pattern on my website, hopefully by the end of this week. Okay, so I am gonna come back with my um, angle brush, tiny touch of um, asphaltum. I just wanna shade, float some of that color right in between those petals. If you need to come back at the base, if you cover all of it up, you can come back, float that color right around that center, and then a little bit of it on the center. Okay, hello. Have I been off camera the whole time? <laughs> when I zoom in, I can't see it on my um, thing here. So again, you can float that color around the base, around the center again, to separate petals if you need to. Yep, I was. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, let's zoom out just a little. And let's take care of these little scroll strokes. I love scroll work. Um, that goes back to my one stroke days when I learned to do scroll work. And um, every, every time I was done painting, I would take the paint on my palette and I'd sit there and practice um, with paint because I wanted to get better at it. So I have that number five shader 
plantation pine, margarita, and white. Um, less plantation pine than margarita and white. Okay, I want it to be a little, little different than the leaf color. It's got some brightness to it. Okay, tiny touch of moisture in my brush just so that it will move for me. So I'm gonna sit on the corner of the brush. You're gonna sit on the corner, push, pull, slide on the chisel edge, and lift. Push, pull, lift. I do much better when I paint it fast <laughs> than slow, but I wanna go slow enough that you can see it. And it's a little brighter than my other ones, but that's quite all right. So push, pull, slide to nothing. Push, pull, slide on the chisel edge. This will look awesome in my friend's kitchen. I'm almost finished painting her other, oh, that would be awesome, Jackie. Okay, so I have um, my petal here. I, I don't know why my line drawing is different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna improvise and go here and do another one. And I can take black, I can take an eraser and get rid of that or I can just take black paint and get rid of it, okay? I want to I want to have that go right into that stem. Okay. So, back to our greens. Little plantation pine, margarita, white. And I have get my hand out of the way. I have one right here. Push, pull, slide, lift. Push, pull, slide, lift. And I got pretty yellow, but I kind of like it. Push, pull, and as you're sliding, you're curving slightly. Push, pull, slide. Okay. Now, to get those, you're so welcome, kitty. These have been so fun to do, I have to say. And I did quite a few of them this week, right? <laughs> if you haven't seen them all, you can see them on my page here. Okay, so those little um, swirls are easy to do with a liner brush. I'm gonna use the rigger brush. And again, inky paint. So plantation pine, margarita, white. I would probably drive my kids crazy if they watched this because um, I've been they would call me um, Miss Repeat because I repeated everything. And I said, well, if you listen the first time, I don't have to repeat it. <laughs> I just want to make sure you heard it. Okay, so the toe of the brush, like the very tip of that brush, I'm going to try and get my hand out of it. This is a tricky one to do um, without my hand. And I anchor my pinky. Let's see. So I'm going to anchor my pinky, touch, swirl, bring it around and in, okay? I find it's easier to do it in one stroke. So touch, pull, slide, and bring around. And if it stutters, you can come back and fill it in, okay? Then I have one here. I didn't do a swirl as much on this one. I just kind of pulled it from here. And in. And then this one I do have a bigger swirl. So touch, pull, swirl around, and in. All right. Now, funny enough, I did not... Um, I did not put any splatter on this one. That's kind of crazy for me, but I loved everything about it. I wanted to leave it simple because I felt like this gave you all the decoration you needed. And I liked the black. So I used to paint on black all the time. In fact, I have two huge massive canvases in my house, like 60 by 60 that are covered with flowers and the background's black. 
So Mezzaluna brush, white, work it in, wipe it off. And again, I'm gonna to touch right in this brighter area, but it is smaller. I'm not going out as much this time. I'm just kind of dry brushing that on to get that highlight, okay? Now, if you need to come back and fix up any place that, you know, you got your fingers, a little bit of black, you just want to make sure that you don't leave any kind of harsh lines. You know, it's very thinned paint because, again, I don't want to have a big ridge of paint there. If you need to shape anything up, you can do that with your background color. All right. And uh, this one up here that I decided not to put in where it was because I didn't want it to go over that flower. And whatever brush, you know, floats your boat to do that. I'm just using an angle brush because it was closer to me. Okay, so let's... I would love to tackle a huge canvas, maybe after I retire. I would love to teach one, Maddie. I I used to paint, and I have about four of those 60 by 60s because I have plans, but okay. I know this stuff, well, it goes on this way. Let's put that there. I'm just going to turn that over so that you get that original. Again, I'm going to push that in. But like Tracy Moreau's tip to me was put it on, base coat it, because then it's already in place. Um, and I will have to push that in. But I didn't want to ruin the other side before I painted it. So let's uh, pull my chair up. Hi, D. Thank you so much, Carol. Love that you're in my group. Thank you so much. All right, so let's come back up here. Whew. Pretty, huh? I, I'm so pleased with that. I just, I love the surface. I loved the lemons I painted on the uh, fabric. And um, I want to paint some on glass. I did a glass set one time. I can't remember, Mom, if you're still on. I can't remember if it was for your friend. Um, but I did one uh, with, like, a pitcher and glasses. And um, But, oh, my gosh, it's been years. And um, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Yes, yeah, so Linda Morgan and, um, let's see, Linda Morgan and Linda Oliveris, um, private message me your mailing address, and I will get those prizes to you this week, okay? Have a fantastic evening. I will be back here on my Sandy McTeer Designs page for Sunday in the studio with Sandy on the 16th of May and I'll do the drawing for those other prizes, okay? Appreciate you guys. Have a great night. Get out those paints, pick up those brushes, and paint something this week, all right? Bye.